Let's bring on our next guest. So excited to bring her on, Ariel Gold. Hi, Ariel. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi. Nice to see you, Katie. You too. Yes. First, I want to talk to you about this really important petition that you guys are working on at Code Pink that's about uh, the Jewish National Fund's afforestation uh, campaign. Afforestation as compared to reforestation is planting uh, trees or a forest where there never was one before. This is, and the Jewish National Fund is carrying this out in the Nakab, which is southern Israel and is desert and really isn't meant to have a forest. And over a hundred, probably far more than a hundred now, um, Palestinian Bedouins, a third of them children who are, and, and they're all citizens of Israel, um, have been arrested in the past couple of weeks protesting this afforestation project because it's not really about putting in a forest. It's certainly not about as, um, as at least I was taught by as a kid, and you might have been as well too, Katie, because I, I know you grew up Jewish, about no, making not, the not desert that kind. bloom. No. <laughs> well, about making Other the kind. desert bloom. It's no. certainly not about that. What it's about is the uh, another phase of ethnic cleansing, of removing Palestinians, their lands, um, and again, by the JNF, facilitated, brought to you by the JNF. It's literally just putting ethnic cleansing in the form of planting trees. You kind of couldn't get more sinister than that. But can you tell people about what the JNF, the Jewish National Fund, is for those watching who don't yeah, know? Yeah, so so this has always been what the JNF has been about. The JNF was founded as far back as 1901. At um, It was the Fifth Zionist Congress, and it was a call, um, a motion at that Congress to establish a fund to purchase land in historic Palestine to colonize, right? That was the purpose of what it was set up. It was arranged to raise money. And, um, you know, it was, I have to say, when I was a kid and my grandparents talked about it, it sounded really nice to me, like you plant a tree. I don't know if I happen to have a tree planted in my name somewhere over there, because you could plant a tree at somebody's birth or in remembrance of somebody, and it sounds really wonderful. So they would distribute these little blue boxes, which were in hundreds of thousands, still are, synagogues and homes and Jewish community centers to raise money for the greening of, of Israel. And it just sounds lovely. But from its very start, and um, Dr. Zogby talks about this in his book, Invisible Victims. From its very start, it was about exclusivity and it was about ethnic cleansing, about removing uh, Palestinians from their lands. And, um, you know, it began, so so they began just buying up land. Like any Palestinian, they could get to some land before Palestinians started to be like, it feels like something funky is um, going on here. And then in the years leading up to the Nakba, which was the establishment of the state of Israel and the expulsion of over 750,000 Palestinians, um, the JNF meticulously charted topography, roads, land, water resources, and profiled every single member of the Palestinian community by age, by political affiliation, and by their hostility to the Zionist project. These are known as the village files. And so during 1948, which um, Jewish communities often celebrate as this miracle, this, this idea that this like ragtag army, yeah. these Jewish, you know, went in and managed to win their land. Well, they actually used these village files. So they had this complete map out. So these uh, Jewish militias, um, so that when they went in and they burned villages, carried out massacres and drove people from their homes and lands, the JNF had supplied the materials to do that. And then after that, um, around the 1950s, the JNF, this is when they used their well, we've raised money to plant trees. They started planting trees all over the place. Coincidentally, they planted all the trees on the ruins of the Palestinian villages. And the aim of that was to prevent the Palestinian refugees from being able to return to their homes. So they have had these um, sinister 
these sinister activities behind the idea of tree planting from the very start. And they're doing that right now in the Negev. And they've mostly planted non-native trees, mostly pine and eucalyptus, um, which are a tinderbox for forest fires, which if you followed, um, you know, if you followed this going on in the past few years, there's been a number of these forest fires. I want to share with people this website. So here it is, JNF Tree Center, plant a tree in Israel. Um, one, you select the occasion. Two, you so, so let's see, I'm going to do this right now. Can you guys see it? Let's see. What what should we? Oh, there's so many options. We could, wow. We could do, is there somebody's birthday? We could plant a tree for somebody's birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Birthday. I mean, but I just want people to know we could do it for an anniversary, Father's Day, for a healthcare professional. For those you can't see, I guess those are people who are no longer with us. For your pet, I would never do that for Bodhi. For yourself, <laughs> if you've been vaccinated. In memory, Mother's Day, new baby, <laughs> other occasions, retirement, Rosh Hashanah, New Year. Thank you. Uh, to, to, to be shot. What I don't know that. But that's the that's the New Year of the trees. It's a beautiful Jewish holiday, which this year just happened. It took place in January this year, and on the day of Tish uh they were arresting Palestinian be uh, Bedouins in the Nakab um, as they worked on planting trees to displace them. This is, these are their agricultural lands where they grow wheat. It's a wow. sick provision of um, really this is. very That's beautiful nice. and lovely ecological holiday. So the, you, you do the plant, then you select a certificate. So you buy starting at eight. So tree for Israel certificate, trees for Israel certificate is a classic certificate. It's appropriate for all occasions and all memories or birth. And that's eighteen dollars. It starts at, and then oh, they're all eighteen dollars. Okay, because that's a special number. They don't have more expensive ones. Oh wow! I'm well, sure anyway. they do. Oh no, they I'm do. Sure they got five. I'm sure there's additions. There's, yeah, you can get a Grove certificate. Gifts of a Grove Woodland Parkland and Forest donations of five thousand above receive this special certificate mounted on a beautiful wooden plaque. I mean, I would hope. The least um, do it. Maybe you get to, maybe you get to displace like five whole villages for that right. Yes. That would that would be good. Do they give you the name like when you sponsor a child in other countries? Do you get to like see the the name of the family <laughs> that you're displacing? That would be that would be very that would be great detail. Um, so yeah, it's a uh, it's a pretty it's oh and then you the dark how many trees? Oh, I could plant two thousand trees for ten thousand um, dollars. Yeah, and then it's just it's th there's also a video we can look at. There's no better gift to give or receive than one that can connect you with nature and your homeland. That's why JNF has made it easier than ever to connect with Israel on a spiritual, emotional, and physical level, all while doing it online. JNF has made it super easy for you to order your tree certificate online. Just go to jnf.org slash trees, pick which special occasion it's for, whether a birth, bar mitzvah, just order your tree online and let's get planting to help the environment and reduce your carbon footprint. Reduce Every your tree carbon counts. footprint. What could be better? And these yeah. absolutely do not reduce your carbon footprint. As I said, the uh, pine tree, it's been referred to as a keg, as a keg of gasoline for a fire. And it, that's how it works because it, um, the pine tree, uh, because it provides so much shade, you don't have other uh, plants underneath. And so when the fire starts, it just takes over. And then there's eucalyptus trees, which uh, I know the first time that I, I visited um, Palestine and Israel, we, we went to the, the Nakab or Negev desert and met with some of the Bedouin tribes, the El Arakib tribe, who's had their village destroyed over a hundred times because Israel is just hell bent on getting them off this land. Well, they've been planting eucalyptus trees um, right there in, in, in the in the Nakab. And I was familiar with them because of uh, the University of Berkeley has a bunch of eucalyptus trees and they've been trying to get rid of them because eucalyptus trees, they're great in Australia where the JNF right. brought them from, but in places where they don't belong, they interfere with the decomposition of other materials and their leaves actually, um, if, if they're planted where they don't belong, 
create like a poison in the soil. So what better way for Israel in the name of uh, environmentalism, planting trees to prevent Palestinians from being able to grow their own food? And the Bedouin uh, people, these are, these are nomadic communities. They move around and they graze their animals and they live off the lands. And what Israel has been trying to do with them is they have been trying to move them into basically public housing, into like housing projects and move them into uh, the Israeli economy, right? Similar to what they've done in the West Bank, employing uh, Palestinians as workers, building the very settlements that are taking their land from them. And they're they're really determined to do this with the, the Bedouin community. So they refuse to recognize the villages that they build, and then they destroy them, and then they plant trees that poison the land, and then they put in a forest.